Welcome back to What Artsy Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the 105 FH18B2, the French Tier 5 Premium SPG that you might know as a Lefty or a Leaf Blower. This one's on the north spawn of Brock Robger. And it's under the command of Yoohoo! Yes, Yoohoo, it's me! <laughs> yes. In fact, that's, that's why he actually gave the name uh, or used the name because he wanted people to say, Yahoo, it's me, um, every time they got hit by him. Anyway, he's in the French Tier 5 Premium SPG, one of only two Premium SPGs in the game, which means that Wargaming are too shy, too afraid of the tank players to actually put more Premium SPGs in the game, and they know they could, because they'd make a fortune if they did. They're too chicken to put more SPGs in the game, yes. Now this is one of two games, as I said, it's a, a double replay. Rounds out. <laughs> this guy's in for a bit of a shock. Yes, 202, uh, well, 108 hit points recorded. He fires the second round in, pulls back to look, and he's got a kill. Yep, blind kill with the second shot. Okay, so we've got a lovely shot there, and now he's aiming for the AMX COC. Oh, he got that one guy! He penetrated him for a full 408 hit points, and he's out the game. Now, this 105mm light field howitzer will do 410 alpha, penetrating 53mm of armor, and it's got a standard reload of 8.92 seconds, and we can see Yuhu has actually got a reload time of 7.22. Very quick indeed. Okay, next target, Panzer 3, Alsurum J rounds out. He leads the target. Oh, another penetrating shot right into him. It looked like it hit the turret, actually. Rounds out, and that target's gone. He would have hit it if it carried on. Okay, Miltilda Black Prince got slightly more armor than those two tanks we saw go together. Let's see what we can do with this one. Rounds out. Looks good. It is a direct hit on the tracks, unfortunately, though. So he didn't get any damage other than the tracks, but that one did do some damage. 150 hit points, and he's picking up some damage assist. More shots going in. Another direct hit for 119. Now he's still firing standard HE at this guy, and he gets another hit, this time for 117. Two more shots like that, the guy's out the game. Rounds out. Another direct hit, this time for 182. This guy's a one shot now. Next shot will kill. He fires a blind shot in. Oh, and he got him! He got him with a blind shot. Now, right at the other end of the battlefield, we just saw a Stug die, Alsun B die. He did fire the shot though, so unfortunately he's waiting for the reload, but he's dialing in on a KV-1. Just working out where the guy's going. Fires around ahead of him. He hits the ground, but I think he'll get the next shot on target. Works it out, rounds out. Another direct hit for 117. Yoohoo's having a great game on this one. Rounds out. Oh, he's got another kill. 147. There's only three enemy tanks left, an RT and two medium tanks. And one of them's up here. It's the T6 medium. He won't be alive for very much longer because he's a one shot. And he's out the game because he's killed by the VK301H. The enemy RT has been spotted right down in the water, but unfortunately he's out of maximum range. Just beyond maximum range, so we have to move a bit closer if we want to get shots on him. By the time we do, he'll probably be dead. In fact, the RT's dead, and now we're just the VK3601H left on the enemy team. And by the time Yuhu stops moving, that target will probably have been dead already. Okay, he's in position, and the target is gone. So it's a great game and it's already over for Yoohoo! Here's the results of the first battle and that was the second class tanker for Yoohoo in the 105 left H 18B2. He also managed to get a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He got four exactly. A bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 14. And he got a high caliber because he dealt the most damage in that game overall. A win eight of 5,229, which is super unicum standard. Let's have a look at team score. 
Well, the highest damage was 1,792 hit points, and that went to Yuhu. Second highest damage went to the T67 on his team with 1,540. And the third highest damage went to the enemy SU-2122, who got 1,425 hit points. When it came to kills, he shared the top spot with the T67. They both got four kills each. Three kills went to the SU-2-122, and two kills went to the Semivente M41, I think that is. Is it the M41? Yes, it is, on the enemy team. And when it came to base XP, he's got that one too. So he's got the top in all three columns. 819 went to Yuhu, 724 went to the T-67, and 550 went to the KV-1 on his team, and the KV-1 got a steel wall. He fired 17 rounds, very short amount, very small amount of ammo to get that much damage. 11 direct hits on the enemy, two penetrating shots, we saw them. 11 splash, damage of 1,792 hit points, all of it at more than 300 meters. He damaged five of the enemy, killed four of them, and he did 170 hit points of damage assistance. On a premium count, he earned 42,161 credits from the game, 21,080 from personal reserves, 63,241 altogether. And after ammunition resupply and consumables, he still made a profit of 41,065 credits from that game. 1,228 XP for the battle, 2,458 for mission completion, 492 for this being a premium vehicle, and 614 from personal reserve bonus. Took away 4,792 experience points altogether. He said, very quick game. It was. Four and a half minutes. Very, very quick indeed. And of course, it, it was helped a lot by the fact that he did get such really great shots and penetrating shots at that on the enemy tanks to actually virtually wipe them out. That was one of the penetrating shots, the AMX ELC. 408 hit points of damage to him. The other one was the Panzer 3 Ausserung J. Got him on the move as well. 410 hit points off one shot, and it actually hit the turret, and that's what uh, made him very, very vulnerable. And uh, although he didn't get the kill on this guy, he certainly did get the kill on the rest of them. Let's have a look at the... Um, um, oh, that's actually the end of the battle results. So let's have a look at the second replay that Yuhu sent in. The second replay is on the Klondike map, and we're on the northeast spawn. Let's get this show on the road. Game underway. Well, you may have noticed that this is a tier 10 game, and that is the Batch of Tillion 15558. Tier 10 French SPG, 155mm howitzer, capable of doing 680 alpha, penetrating 48mm of armor. He's found his firing position and he's ready to go. Three shot autoloader, standard reload is 49.86 seconds, and we've got 48.75. Okay, he's still going through the reload process. It does take a long while, but it is three shots. So divide it by three, and that would give you the equivalent if it was in the game under uh, any other tier. Okay, first tank comes into sight is an Udes, and he fires one in. Oh my gum! Now he didn't hit the Udes, but he did hit somebody with that first shot because something took the shell and there was no explosion. So I think the Udes has some friend with him, and that friend is now hurting a great deal because he got a direct hit. Now 10 shot seconds between each shot rounds out the second one. Yes, the Udes took 267 hit points and the rest of them was wiped out. So that's a massive amount of stun assist off that shot as well. Rounds out the other Udes. Now, I think that one hit the rock face. There's a, a distinct rock face there. You can see it. Yeah, I think the shell veered to the left and he didn't get anything from that shot at all. Okay, now he's in reload again. 30 seconds before we'll get the next one. Now, the Grand Battle maps are, well, they're normally 30 versus 30, which means you've got a huge number of targets to fire at, but it also means you've got a lot to live up to, because there are more arty than one in this game, yes. In fact, in this game already, we know that there are two arty, because, well, there was two of us alongside each other right at the start of the game. Okay, we've got a Super Conqueror, we're loaded, round out. Now, he got that advanced warning, but he still took 58 hit points of splash from that shot. And we're reloading for the second one. 
Now he's decided he's going to stop on that corner to shoot at our enemies or shoot at our teammates, I mean. Rounds out. Oh, he's pulled away again. And so unfortunately that shell is nothing. Okay, that supercon is moving forwards quite rapidly. But there's a tank that we could hit, the Striv. He has to stay still in order to shoot accurately. And that means he's vulnerable. Rounds out. 30 millimeters of armor. And he takes 97 hit points of damage. Okay, the battle going on in this corner is uh, basically between three enemy tanks and two mice, or mouse, mouses. Yes, I don't know the plural of mouses, it's not mice. Oh, and he goes down to the strip and the strip gets taken out by our teammate in the Object 261. Okay, so we've got two targets to aim at now, and they're both going to try and harass that Type 5 and push him back. So, lead the target on the mouse, work out where he's headed. There we go, he's into the grapple now. We're waiting for that third shell. Oh no, are we in full reload? No, waiting for the last shell. Rounds out. And the supercock is no more. He stayed still too long and he took a hit. Actually, it was a full reload, so we've still got two shells ready to go. He's working out where he can put the shell. Rounds out. Yes, he gets a direct hit, but he stunned his teammate in the process. But I think that uh, mouse is going to go down. Okay, he's got one shell left, and he's looking around for another target to fire at. And unfortunately, we can't hit that K M48 pattern because he's behind the rock. So we're still holding on to that shell. There might be something else we can fire at. Yes, there is. A couple of tanks there we just saw over the ridge line. He fires that round in but doesn't get anything off that one. Okay, so he's in full reload. That's the thing about the bat chat. It used to be a really good RT when they had four shots and it wasn't 10 seconds between each shot that it was actually only two and a half. But the problem was Wargaming felt that it was unfair to the tanks because if you had two bat chat 155-58s in a team, then they could double team each other or uh, double tap it and uh, or tag team each other and therefore uh, enemy tanks could be literally pulverized by non-stop arty shell after shell arriving to damage them and take them out well you who's decided he's going to go for this mouse i don't know if that's the same mouse we saw before i think it is actually it might be he might have survived that grapple with the type 5 heavy we can't hit the leopard even though we're getting requests for fire well he does poke out and he takes a round on the engine deck and that was a penetrating shot for 657 but it was a low roll going for the mouse rounds out a little late but he does get some stun going back to the leopard and the leopard's a little too worried about poking out the next time but there's an m454 now he could probably hit that guy. Changes his mind, instead he goes for the mouse again. Rounds out. Oh! Well, he definitely hit the target, but he didn't get anything off it other than stun assist. But it's enough, 531 stun assist. I think he'd be happy with that. No damage whatsoever from that shell. I can't believe 155 millimeter shell would do no damage to a tank. That is absolutely ridiculous. And again, this is some of the rules that Wargaming have put into the game, which just do not make sense at all. Just like craving, changing the crew system when it works perfectly well. What they should have done is try to fix the matchmaking. That was far more uh, applicable to our, our players. We want to have uh, good players versus good players and not good players versus very new players. Rounds out. Hits the rock instead of the gorilla. I think the other problem that we needed fixing was, of course, the cheaters. Oh, that was a good hit. 310 hit points off the gorilla, and now he's a one shot. In fact, I think this Wizzy 111 158, yep, was just going to go around and assassinate him. 
And now we've got the Progetto to deal with. Unfortunately, he kills the Wizzy. Grabs out. Oh, when he dodged that shell, but he took 50 hit points of splash. Now we are in, in the lead by five tanks at the moment. Most of the battling is going on on the north end of the map and we're over on the east side. So yes, we're a little far over, but we are assisting those guys. Well, looking at the action now, we've got this gorilla. Can we put a shell into him? No, we're not loaded yet. We're still in full reload. I think our gorilla is going to go in and finish that guy off. Yep. There's only one enemy tank over there. It's the enemy gorilla, the other one. Okay, he's leading the target. Rounds out. Just a little too late. Oh, that gorilla took a big hit there from that Euler's. And he goes down. And that means now that side of the map has fallen. But this side of the map is still in action. There's an enemy EBR coming in. Well, we have to lead the target with enough lead to make it work. And unfortunately, he's getting so close now, it's very difficult to aim, but I don't think the EBR knows we're here. Well, he does know we're here now because he just took a stun splash for 72 hit points, and we've got one shell left. Now, he'll probably try and come after us. One of the good things about this RT is that it's reasonably fast. In fact, it's one of the um, one of the fastest RTs other than the FP304. The question is, can he get away from that uh, EBR? Well, the enemy are definitely falling now. Not many of them left. Okay, he's found his firing position. He's still got one shell left. Looking around, the EBR's gone over to... Oh, he's actually gone to a different route. And there he is. We're watching him at the moment. Tussling with a gorilla. And trying to get a solution on him. The more he pulls away, the more easy it is to get him. Firing at the end of the bridge. Just misses him. But he's, he's driving into danger because there's a whole bunch of our tank, tanks ahead of him. In fact, now we've located another enemy tank that we can deal with, and that's a Hesh Bomb, but we're still in the reload with 30 seconds to go. Just under five minutes left on the game. Yes, it's the full 15 minutes, but when you've got so many tanks, it's non-stop action at, in a grand battle. Some of the members of What RT Noobs really like grand battles. And I must say, for an RT, they're actually quite good fun. You have plenty of targets waiting up, but of course you do run out of ammunition really quickly. Okay, he's loaded. Going for the units. Get some splash. Eight hit points. Unfortunately, our Viz 55 goes down. Now, will that Udis come after us? If he does, he's in trouble. Well, he takes another stun. Not going to be able to get rid of that one because he's burned his first aid kit. Who's next? Fires at the same corner. Just in case. Okay, we notice. Oh, that was the uh, Unit 1516 dying there to the gorilla. I think he went into the bushes and was still spotted. The EBR 105 is still doing circuits around that area. I think he didn't want to go any further north just in, or further west just in case he got spotted. But we've spotted another enemy, a Death Star, over in this corner. We've got three shells ready to go. In fact, it's just completing now. Rounds out. He stopped to take a shot and he's just got splashed. Can we fire the next one in? Rounds out. Oh, he's right. He's still there. And this time he does get a direct hit for 237. Right on the money. Can he get another shot in? Well, only the turret's showing, but he might as well fire. Rounds out. 
Oh, he does get it! Lovely shot, 285. There wasn't much showing, but he made him a one shot. In fact, now he's a ram kill. And that's it. He's gone. And I think there's only one enemy left. I think it's the RT. Is it the RT? I'm trying to work out. Oh, no, it's the EBR. The EBR's still alive. The EBR 105, the one who was coming to kill us, he's still alive. In fact, he's now been spotted right up in the north end of the map. And our gorilla's the nearest one to us. We're almost reloaded. Okay, he's going to have to change position because he can't shoot from that particular mount. It just wouldn't work. The, the uh, ground will be against us. But he can fight from here, no problem whatsoever. Okay, looking for that EBR. Same spot, same area. We're hoping the gorilla's going to be able to spot him for us. Our guys are capping. Game's going to be over momentarily. And it is. <laughs> One for good measure. Here's the end of battle stats. And that was an ace tanker game for Yuhu in the bat chat. 155.58. He's had an ace tanker in this, uh, in this RT before. So that's not the first. He did get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got nine. And he got a confederate as well for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else in his team. His win eight from that one was 2,883, which is Unicum standard, close to being super Unicum. Let's have a look at team score. Well, he actually got the second highest damage in the game, or did he? No, not the second highest. Where am I saying? He's down here. Sorry, Yuhu was 2,994 hit points. Highest damage was the Udes with 7,627. So, my gum, he did a lot of work. 5,113 went to the IS-4. He picked up a steel wall. And the third highest was a Heshbon, who managed 5,111. And he didn't get any medals at all. And, of course, here we see Yuhu, the only other person to get a, a medal in the game. He got uh, a confederate out of that game. Yes, if you look at the list, you can't see any other medals showing on this game. So it's only two players actually managed to get medals. When it came to kills, though, it was the Yudos again. With the high damage, he got five kills. Four kills went to the Gorilla 15. Two kills went to the Ice 4, the Heshbarn, the Vis 55, the Heshbarn again, and the Gorilla. And on the enemy team, actually, sorry, I missed out the fact that Progetto got 65. Progetto 65 got three kills out of the game. So he's actually in joint third uh, or th third place with the 261, the 103B, the, the Death Star, the EBR 105, the Heshbarn, and an IS 7 all in joint fourth place, actually. And, of course, because Yuhu only got one kill, that put him out of the score in, in fifth place. But on the other side of the coin, actually, he did manage to get the Confederate. When it came to base XP, he's actually in sixth place because the Yudas managed to get the top in all three columns, 1,336 to him. IS-4 managed 1,221. Viz-55, 1,034. The Type 5 Heavy managed to get 1,002. So four players managed to get over 1,000 base. And we can see that Yuhu was the second player down after those bunch with 985 base. So he had a very good game just on the edge of getting into the over 1,000 mark. He fired 25 rounds of the game, got eight direct hits on the enemy, one penetrating shot and 19 splash. Damage of 2,994 hit points, of which 2,922 were at more than 300 meters. The difference being that EBR 105, and that was a shot as the guy was retreating, and he managed to splash him as he was disappearing into the distance. 11 enemy vehicles damage, one kill. That's earned him the Confederate, so there's a 10 difference there. 719 hit points of damage assistance and 3,953 hit points of stun assist off 18 stuns, and that earned him the ace tanker on a premium count he earned 79,493 credits for the battle and after ammunition resupply took away 51,493 credits profit 1,477 xp but there's no multipliers so that's all the experience points he took away but yes it was a very good game and he put in a lot of damage to enemy tanks and the right tanks as well tanks that were actually inside of our teammates 
So they got hit directly afterwards, and that earned him a very nice little ace tanker. And that's the way to do it, actually. If you can hit enemy tanks and stun them, just at the moment they get spotted by our teammates, they literally get plastered from all different directions. They get wiped out. You pick up all the stun assist. And then, of course, if you do that enough times, you end up with a nice ace tanker. So two great games there by Yuhu. Yes, firstly, with the Leffy, he managed to get a second class and a high, ca uh, high caliber. And in the second game, he got an ace tanker and a confederate. So very well done indeed. If you enjoyed those replays, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithms. And thank you for watching.